Mark Watts, the lead FDS.com, and I'm here on the campus of Urbana University, and this is part of our Sports Performance Coach Education Series. Uh, and now we're going to talk about uh, becoming a mentor to young coaches. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have uh, interns at uh, several different universities and organizations uh, from a number of different schools, from different backgrounds, and was able to learn the hard way about that process and really what it takes uh, to develop uh, young interns. I'll be honest, I uh, probably went about it the wrong way, and part of it was because I didn't have the right uh, objectives in mind uh, when incorporating uh, either an internship at a college program uh, or, or so on. I think that there's a couple things to think about. What this presentation will not be is about uh, really the art of coaching and coaching coaches on how to coach. I think that's a separate entity in itself and, and, and really uh, something that takes a lot more uh, time and, and, and really there's so many different factors with that. Um, so the other thing it won't be, it won't be specifically on how to start an internship program at a university. Uh, again, that's another uh, separate presentation that I think, uh, and again, was able to, to, to have a little bit of excess by uh, learning things the hard way. So to go, go through. Um, the objective today is again, uh, to, to make sure that, that we can get you a, a very comprehensive plan that will fit your situation, whether you're at the college, university, uh, high school, or private setting, and hopefully you'll have some skills to take back with you uh, with that. Uh, the biggest mistake that I made uh, when I was incorporating an internship or some kind of mentorship was doing it for the wrong reasons. I started out by trying to get as many coaches as I can to help our teams, and I, it was a big mistake for me because uh, what I was doing is I was bringing some young coaches that didn't have the experience and put them in a situation where they were not going to be successful. Uh, they weren't looked at by the university or the sport coach as an expert in their field and it looked like I was pawning off some teams to them. And really what I realized was that when you have an internship program, it's going to take a lot more work than if you did not, obviously, but even if you have extra help coaching specific teams, you're spending a lot more time because now you're not only coaching the teams that you're working with directly, but you're also coaching the coach with those teams and acting as a mediator between those. So for every unpaid assistant that you have in the internship program, you're going to have to devote a lot more time for each one of those. So all of a sudden now you're getting assistance helping with the mentoring of those young coaches. So it's a good situation and it will help you as a coach. It will help your assistants as they are mentoring those interns. But at the same time, uh, make no mistake about it, it will be more time invested for you. Um, it will benefit the student athletes that you're working with, absolutely, if you do it the correct way. And that really has to be the goal. It has to, you have to be in a situation where it's going to benefit the students you're working with and it's going to benefit those young coaches that you're there to mentor, making sure that they leave that internship, that volunteer period, uh, as a better coach than they were when they arrived, when they stepped in the door. And that's your responsibility as a coach to make sure that you can ensure that. So, um, again, this is a sample of a 15-week program, just 15 because that's a, a pretty much it was an average semester at most of the schools I've been at. Um, most of these, you know, for me, the longer the internship, the better. I think with, uh, you know, the, the CSCCA, we require 640 hours for their internship program. And however you divide it up, the one thing that I think is important is uh, the longer they go, I don't know if you really need to have, at, you know, intern there for you know 12 hours a day although they should be used to the grind something I learned from from Tim Contos they got to be able to show up and uh, you know and again show up very early and leave very late and understand that that's really, really what they wanted to do uh, but also um, I think that they should that that if that internship can be elongated over a semester so now all of a sudden they're getting exposed to multiple teams in different seasons and they're able to interact with with coaches in different uh, avenues uh, off season versus in season I think it's important for them but this was a sample that we end up doing and really it was these five stages were something I talked with Derek Fry about a while ago and I think that it helped us 
And again, you can change these things up. Maybe that's not important to you, but for me, I thought this was better for us to formulate the plan, plan to help those, those young interns. So, and again, just acclim you know, acclimated to the setting. You know, there's a, there's a, a very, uh, you know, there's a, a kind of a, a yin and yang when it comes to uh, learning the system that the head coach wants with developing your own philosophy as an intern. And I think, but that first has to be that has to acclimate to the system. So this is, and again, we'll talk in a little bit detail, more detail about all of these. And again, these, these weak designations may or may not fit for you what you want. You may be able to do that in one day. I don't know. That's up to you to decide. Uh, but again, acquiring knowledge is huge because again, we talked about this numerous times is that, you know, it's not really that you need, you know, young coaches to be able to access information. They can access all the information they want. What they need is a filter. They need to be able to see what is going to be applicable for them and where that information is coming from. Uh, and again, generating questions. Again, knowing, like Dave Tate always says, knowing what you don't know and being able to say, okay, this is what I need. And again, just by coming up with a question that can help you as a coach is really a, a one step further uh, to, be in a, to be in a better coach. So just knowing what questions that you need to ask uh, of yourself. Um, and again, the other one would be, uh, you know, formulating opinions, start to have, you know, okay, this is where I stand my ground on and really having the reasons why and then developing a philosophy would be last. And, and really that, you know, that's just something that comes up in every interview and it's something that's ongoing. You know, it's, it's going to be different every single year for a lot of coaches and even the best coaches, you know, can say that. Um, so let's talk about, you know, acclimating to a system and really we're talking about you know making sure as a coach that you are setting the expectations and setting a standard and make sure that that has done early. Is there a certain way you want them to dress? Obviously, you know, being on time would be one thing. Is there a certain way that you want them to address each other? Uh, you know, I talked to Dr. Brian Thompson about you know making sure that his internships always referred to each other as coach, and that would that would really set the tone. Now, when I was a strength coach at Army, our our cadets would refer to me as Mark, and that was fine. That's what Scott wanted. He was a head guy. That's what we wanted. And again, really, when it came down to it, it was only a couple months after that that those young men and women would be defending my freedom. So, really, that depends on your situation that you're in. Um, you know, the schedules. Uh, you know, making sure that you're providing or requiring a schedule of that young person that they can manage, that they're not going to flake because again, it's not going to help anybody. If you're investing the time in that young person and they're investing the time in your program or your facility, for them to just leave um, after a certain amount of time because they can't uphold that schedule, not fair. So make sure you understand again, what's their course load like, what's their other jobs like, and, and really what their intention is. Um, terminology, that's a huge one. Making sure if you have certain cues that you're using, make sure they understand those. And again, that should be set a very you know at the beginning uh, and that should be some kind of an orientation period provided for those interns and I think anytime you can get with them before the students come in the more time you can spend with them almost like a preseason camp the better prepared they're going to be uh, and, and lastly again making sure they understand a sport coach if you're coaching uh, you know 23 teams 35 teams depending on the school you know you're going to have 23 uh, different cultures so it's important that those interns understand that culture. What is acceptable uh, when for, in, in, in terms of a weight room management perspective, in form of a discipline uh, perspective, and what is, what is, what is the, the, the right method and the right way to go about things and, and really getting to know those teams and the culture that that team, because it's going to be different for everywhere you go. So, um, and again, we'll talk about just basically that phase two, and that's really the education and getting at, you know, acquiring knowledge. So, um, this is really kind of based on you. Now, this is something we used when I was at a small liberal arts school that didn't have an exercise science program. So, um, most of our interns that were in house were, you know, pre med majors to, you know, somewhere, you know, somewhere and even in that that field. They might have been just, you know, econ majors that wanted to get the experience and they just loved doing it. We were thankfully uh, created a culture that people wanted to be an intern uh, with us. But we had some outside students that came in that did have a better base with scientific knowledge. So I would keep it as simple as possible. I think that you have to depend on some prerequisites. And I know that there's, you know, uh, you know the, the biggest divide is not necessarily these scientific foundations. Uh, that's not an issue with our, with our recent college graduates and our future college graduates with exercise science physiology programs that's not the issue the issue is how to apply that a lot of them don't have the experience to apply this stuff so it's your job as the intern coordinator to facilitate that 
And really so that when they do graduate, they do know the basics. They do know how to get into a stance. They do know how to run a, a, a Vertec or to, to, to do some electronic timer. They understand RPEs if that's part of your philosophy uh, and how to implement that in, a, in an actual team environment. So that's really the thing. I would say that you would just split those up. Those, 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 it, it's, it's always good to review. And it's always good, even if you're going over some of these foundations, to bring it back to the situation you're in now. Right when you're talking about some real world, what they're dealing with with the current teams, and be able to really see how what applies, what doesn't, and what they could do better to apply it in the future. So that's that's really the thing. And again, going through some of these, um, you know, it really is. You know, we always start with uh, the, the you know the safety uh, type things, how to spot. Don't assume people know how to spot. It, it's it's one of those things. Have a specific way you spot a dumbo exercise to a. Um, you know, to a squat exercise, to a, to, a, to a press, to a bench, whatever. And if there are certain exercises that should not be spotted, uh, specifically Olympic lifts, overhead presses, deadlifts, um, you know, unless you're one of those stand behind to be getting a pitcher, guys. I don't know. But, you know, knowing, making sure, don't assume they know anything. And I think that's important, no matter what their background is. They might know, they could probably, you know, talk about the Krebs cycle like that, but then they don't really don't know how to stand, you know, in front of a bar if they were doing to do Olympic lifts. So don't assume that. Uh, and going over th th those different things, just to go back, uh, those scientific foundations, again, those, th those were just said would, would be basic. Um, and then really... Uh, the, the exercise technique should be a, of a huge component of, of, your, of your program. I don't know it's an equal fifth like this graph is saying. I don't think it is. Uh, that's going to be what you decide. And that might de depend on the specific person that's in the internship program. It might be individualized. Uh, you might be able to set up someone with an exercise science degree from an outside university, someone that's been in your program that's been doing your exercises for four years. Maybe match them up so that they're able to feed off of each other and really kind of see how things apply uh, back and forth. Um, program design, that is, the, that is the, the, one, the one thing that probably I didn't do a very good job of because the situation I was in logistically did not allow me to allow my assistants to program specific sports. So what I was able to do is there was a couple things I'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about assignments, but giving them some mock programs, giving them, allowing them some input with the programs, and really empowering them to, to, to really the non-recordable, uh, you know, the, 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 the prehab, the movement prep, the additional circuits, the hypertrophy work, the things that, the, at, that you don't really need to, to, to really have the data on, giving them the power and making sure you're approving that and going through. So that's the one way to kind of indoctrinate them into the, the program design process. Uh, and also coaching methods, you know, how to coach. And again, we, have, we had a four-step system uh, that we're not going to have time to go over today, but really when you're talking about you look at everything from you know before the set, between the reps, and, 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 and so on, as far as what you should be doing, how you should be coaching, where you should be standing when you're coaching, and now you can address that when you're doing those exercise clinics. So that's, that's important. So again, you have phase three, and that's basically generating the questions. Um, you know, what questions do we want to know? I think you have to get them out there and expose. Be careful, because there's a lot of information that really is not going to apply. And again, you have to have that filter. Um, looking at uh, certain articles on certain websites, you know, may not give them the best idea. You know, look at if you're if it's not a a, a research oriented academic article, uh, just make sure that they understand the source. You know, it goes back to the uh, you know who is 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 the person that is disseminating this information and to take it with a grain of salt. Make sure that they are able to take everything in and still be able to ask more questions about it. So when they're generating these questions, again, you know, what, what are the resources? Where, are their, where, where does their go to? Um, you know, why is this important? That is probably the most important, important part of it, is that that information, how is it going to apply you know, to your athletes and when does it apply? So again, generating those questions is important and that's really encouraged them to think outside the box. Um, the, the principles, and again, this is, you know, that's the old, the old saying, you know, uh, methods are many, principles are few, you know, methods always change and principles never do. I don't know who said that, but I just might boil or somebody, uh, but it is really true. Um, you know, and, and really, you know, some of those basic principles they have to know, and again, I think that, you know, if you, if you look at just, you know, the progressive overload and the said principle and the, some of those basic, um, you know, 
concepts that have been, you know, throughout the th throughout training have been have been present. I think just to understand those th those, those basics are important. Um, and again, then they can decide what methods they want to really look at. But again, this is this is really what they're talking about. And I think it's a fine line between figuring out what is what is applicable to them, but at the same time. Uh, what do they need to work on? So that's a kind of that, 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 that relationship between here's what I want to find out, here's what I need to know, here's what I need to work on, but this is what I believe and this is what I'm strong about. And I think it goes back to the old you know, saying, is if you can say why, this is what I believe and this is why, um, I think they're, they're on a start to really at least start to develop their own philosophy using what you've taught them, using what, they, you know, what, what they've learned in the past. So, um, and then you know, the last part is you know, when you're talking about that is really getting to the point where uh, they understand, you know, and again, um, where they stand. And if now, right now, at the end of this, right, they're kind of dece deciphering the principles to where they're going to implement their training or how they're going to implement their training. And then the last part is, again, now if you're a, th you're a strength coach, what is, how are you going to approach this situation, right? Now that you have all this information, how are you going to approach this information? Can you do that in 15 weeks? I don't know, but I think as a, as a mentor and as an internship coordinator, you should start that process uh, for that. So again, um, going through, uh, and again, this is one thing that we did with the, the internship development as an overall perspective. Um, and again, you know, it's that basically that fine line between being able to coach athletes from day one, um, and even if that's just coaching them on the warm-up, coaching them on how to foam roll, whatever it may be, uh, and learning. Um, what is, you know, you know, as much getting as much information as they can. It's got to be that two-way street. They have to they have to benefit the university or the facility, and the facility and university has to benefit them in their development process. The other two things that are really important is the networking part. And I think as a mentor and as a uh, as a coordinator of their internship or practicum, you have to facilitate that. You have to give them the opportunities to do that. So whether it's bringing in outside coaches to speak to them, whether it's, you know, getting, uh, I, I, brought, I brought nine interns to, to a conference. We all stayed in the same hotel room. Uh, it was awful, but it was one of those situations where they might not have that opportunity if not. Um, if, I, if, if I wouldn't have been able to, to secure a university van to, to, to go there. Uh, bringing outside people in to evaluate them, to evaluate um, your program is always a benefit. But I think that's important. You have, to, you have to be able to facilitate that. And this is something that I've talked to Jail Holdsworth about, and I really got uh, a very good perspective from Ross Bowser about you know, making your interns compete in something. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's powerlifting, uh, Olympic lifting, strongman, CrossFit, bodybuilding, figure, whatever. But to be able to set a goal and physically understand how that process works, I think is important. And even if they don't want to, even if they don't, you're not in a situation where they can compete, um, make them train with you. Make them train for something, even if they're not going to compete. Uh, because again, that is also important too. I wish I would have had more, forced my interns to train with me more. Not because that I, my training system was better, but I guarantee I would have probably got to know them a lot better by getting under the bar with them. So that's something to really have it. You know, having a you know, having a certain day where everybody trains together, regardless of their endeavors. That's you know, go back to the old school. You know, everybody has a different discipline, but you know what? On this day, we're all going to squat together, and it doesn't matter what your rep ranges are, what your intensity are, but we're all going to squat together. So that's just something to really think about, and it helps bring that that bonding in. So um, assignments and evaluations. These are, again, these are just examples we use because it was right for our situation. It might not be right for yours. That's what you have to decide. But we wanted to keep it basic. We didn't, with our program, we didn't have a prerequisite within the university. We didn't have a, a you know, it, it was, by the time we started this internship program, the lecture class was, was, was said and gone. So it, this was one of those things we tried to incorporate some of that lecture within the system. So uh, we talk about, again, some team teaching. I'm a big, you know, again, an elementary education background. I'm a big team teaching. You know, retention is really important, you know, when you're able to teach a subject and to be able to do some of those team teaching, make your students get in front of the class to teach a certain scientific concept, work, concept, work together, create a PowerPoint, create the visuals. I think that's important. Going through it again with um, 
exercise technique per, per presentation, that is huge. That is important to get them up there and really to be able to, and this goes to our level systems we'll talk about in a minute, but to be able to, in, to, to get in front of a group and talk about a specific exercise, like I've heard it before, Joe Kennedy said it, you have to be a great beginner coach. And you know that's something that really is, 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 has stuck with me and it's got to stick with, with your, they have to be able to, everybody that leaves your program should be able to uh, be able to teach a basic squat progression, a basic, you know, basic pull from the floor, a basic press, uh, whatever it may be, they should be able to teach those basics with, with it, with, by the time they leave your internship. That's, that's, that's a given. They have to be able to do it. If not, I don't know if it's the university. Some of it's on them for not actually doing an internship because I don't know an internship in this country that you would go through the whole thing and not learn that. So just make sure that, again, look at the objectives that you want and make sure you're able to evaluate what they've been able to do. Um, you know, the CSCCA, when you, when you get when you get uh, certified after that 640 hour internship and after a written test, you have to stand in front of, I had a round table, but I think they do it different now with a panel. But here we go, you have three minutes, teach me, here's a dowel rod, teach me how to do a squat. And I think you still have to be able to, to, to do those different things and be able to defend your program or whatnot. So, um, and that goes to the next thing, you know, resource review, just, just that's something that, you know, again, just get them out there, used to, you know, just getting, in the habit of getting the, that information in, I think is important. And this goes along with the same thing uh, as program design. I like to do it where I pick the pro, they, they basically draw out a hat, they pick the sport, they pick the season, and then they have to come up with a one-week program, some I stole from the CSC, CSCCA as well. And again, it really just, you can get an idea. And really with that programming, the most important thing when you're evaluating that, and I would create some kind of a matrix or a rubric so you can say, okay, they've, they've, they've fulfilled this criteria and this is, this is my issues with it. Um, I would just make sure that they can say why, right? You did this before this, why? And as silly as it is, that's really important for, for, for interns, for young coaches to do. Because the problem is, in the whiteboard generation that we're having with coaching right now, people are just, again, I'm just going to do this looks good, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do this. You know, it's just like when you go get your oil change, right? I go to get my oil change, I say, listen, I just need my oil change. Now, if he comes back, that technician comes back and says, listen, I'm not going to change your oil. I'm going to teach you why it's important to have your oil changed. Right, and I'm going to teach you how to change your oil, own oil, so you don't have to do it. I'm like, no, just I don't care, just change my oil. And I think that's the same thing we've got into a lot of athletes and coaches that they're looking at different things and saying, okay, just give me the program, we'll put this in, see how it works. And I think the you know asking why is really important. So anyway, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. Uh, the last thing is again the KIC evaluations. We did this, and I'll go into detail with this because, again, these were the three things that we thought were most important. And I'll tell you why we picked these three. And then the level classes, level system classification, we would do a, both a peer classification or peer review, and we also do, I would also you know, do, do an actual evaluation plus a self-evaluation. So they had three different modalities really to kind of uh, bring that you know, profile together. And it's amazing where they thought they were to where I thought they were uh, when that level system. So let me talk to you a little bit about that. So KSC evaluations. This is something, again, people are saying, well, what's the most important components of a coach? What is the most important characteristic you have to have in a coach? And people always talk about work ethic and loyalty and, 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 and the, the ability to work with others, the ability to build a rapport and all those different things. And I think that, you know, some of those basic things, if you don't have that, if you don't have the basic ability to build a rapport uh, and you have basic, you know, you, you're not dependable and you don't have a good work ethic, um, th they shouldn't be in your program anyway. They should be fired. Right? So again, if you say, okay, well, they have to have loyalty and you know, they have to be able to trust them. Well, if you can't trust them and they're not loyal to you, don't keep them around. Get rid of them. And again, I've all talked about it. The best thing I've ever done was to, to let a volunteer intern go um, because it just made everything easier. Because again, I had nothing to lose. I had just somebody was, I, had, I have less, I have more time to spend with the other interns, but now that person couldn't even put me on a resume. They couldn't even put me on a, as a reference. They couldn't, you know, and again, it was just, they're the ones that, that, that have a lot to lose. And don't let anyone sabotage your program because you want to feel bad for their time. And again, make sure that's why the expectations are important. We came up with these three because, again, this is what I thought were the, the, the skills that we can really see a change in how those 
interns perform from uh, day one to day last when they finished up. So again, uh, knowledge, uh, initiative, and communication, right? So again, the knowledge base, and that's something you have to be creative on how you assess that, uh, the initiative. That's, that's the people that, again, you always want to have, especially interns and young employees, you always have to have someone you will have to pull back in than someone you have to move along. Because again, in the long run, you might have to, they might make a mistake, right? But at the same time, at least you never have to, you never have to stress the importance of it and you never have to, you know that they're going to have the passion. And the last thing is communication. Listen, if you can't communicate, uh, you're not going to make it in this business. So that's the one thing. Out of all these things, the knowledge base isn't really the thing that, 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 that weeded people out. The initiative, you know, it took me to ask them one or two times uh, and then I just stopped asking them. So then they were... That, that, just, that just took care of itself. But the communication thing was really something that, you know, again, they found out that it's a different, different ball game to go one-on-one -on -one with an athlete going through a problem as opposed to uh, getting in front of a big group and having them uh, execute a drill or, or an exercise. So, um, so that was something that we would do. Uh, the other thing we did with the KIC evaluations, they would set, you know, assess themselves, I would assess them, and they would assess each other. I am a big person as opposed to when it comes to assessments of ranking, all right? I like to rank, um, and I also like to have standards. So the ranking, though, with the interns was great because, again, who's the best? If, you're, if you are training, you want someone to train your team, what intern do you want? And very rarely would they vote for themselves. But it's interesting to see how they would rank some people. Now, we kept that private, but it was still a very good tool for us to, 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 to realize and to see that. So that was, that was really important. Um, and again, we'll talk about these, these, these levels here. Um, with this, now we had the level system. I'll probably just go over the knowledge base. And this is really just for exercise technique. But you can expand this. Uh, Dr. Ryan Thompson has a, a very expansive uh, version of this. And I really like that uh, uh, I'll probably, um, you know, obviously steal from him at some point. But really, it's it's. You know, to me, our, our, the only example I'll give is the exercise technique example, and this is really good. This is, so this fits for any situation. But we had a level zero, which means I cannot explain or demonstrate an exercise, right? Level one means I can explain how to do an exercise, and I can demonstrate it, right? And again, that's level one. That's, that's the basics. That's, okay, show me how to squat, right, boom, and they should be able to do it. Um, th that Most interns should be able, they need to be to that point, Probably by, by about a week, right? And if they're not a level one intern by a week, then you have to evaluate, is this really the best thing for the program and for you as an intern? Uh, the next level is, you know, can the intern, can he identify technique discrepancies, right? And that's it, right? Is he, can, can he look at someone performing Olympic lift and say, that's not right, right? Can he look at somebody sprinting and say, I don't know about that? Can he look at a squat and say, coach, is that, I don't think they're low enough, right? That's a, that's a step all itself because, again, now all of a sudden I'm taking myself out of being able to feel that movement and being able to, 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 to identify um, those discrepancies on myself and be able to see that from different athletes of different body parts, body types and, and, and whatnot. So I think it's important that's the next step. And step three is this is a step that everybody needs to go, get to before they leave your program. And, again, uh, you know, did I fail some athletes by not getting them there? Maybe, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's a lot on the athletes and the athletes should want to get there but um, and this comes from a lot of communication within the in the training sessions you have to be able to do that you have to be able to coach you have to be able to coach the coaches at the same time but really level three is um, can I formulate a strategy uh, to, you know to fix that problem whether it's an acute or, or an accumulative strategy so again it could be they're not getting parallel can we turn our feet out and help that situation um, you know, can we or do we need to implement some, you know, hip mobility exercises with some posterior chain, you know, exercises to, 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 you know, accommodate for that, uh, you know, anterior pelvic tilt if that is the problem. So identifying that problem and being able to formulate a strategy is at level three. So um, that's where it gets to from, from transition from two to three. Most of your athletes are going to be in between there. They might not know the answer. Okay, this is wrong. I think we should do this and this. And you have to allow them to, to get to that point. And you could do the same thing with taking initiative uh, and communication skills too. So um, the, the one thing about when you have people volunteering for you, the one thing that you, it's going to be tough for you to do is to give them the grunt work. They have to be able to, yes, 
they have to be, you know, I spend a lot of time mopping platforms um, and, you know, scrubbing out, you know, supplement containers. One of my jobs at Tulsa was I took a five-gallon Gatorade, uh, you know, container and filled it up with, with you know, with weight gainer. Uh, that, was, that was the NCAA legal um, and, and really took a paint mixer, mix it up, and I, I was in charge of that. I had to clean that out and fill back up and everything. That was part of it. But I also was empowered by Coach Griswold to coach. And the way he treated me in front of the players, I think, is the most important thing. And I think that's one thing that, that, that really is, is important uh, for all coaches. How you are treated, how you treat your interns in front of the players, how you treat your assistants in front of the players, will do more for their perception of that intern or that assistant than anything else you do, regardless of the relationship they have with those athletes. If you treat those, if you treat those guys with respect, but you're also demanding and you also give the, 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 the indication that if they're not doing up the standards it's because it's not what's best for the program and, they, and, they, and people will see that. So I think that's, that's really important. So this is something from Patrick Lencioni. And again, the three signs of a miserable job. And not just for your own job, but think about put yourself in the interns or the volunteer situation, right? Anonymity. Do people know who they are? And it might be just something, I don't know if you have a, have a you know, staff list. I don't know if you have somebody or just maybe it's just introducing to the sport coach. Like I've had sport coaches that, you know, have, you know, look at an intern. I'm like, well, yes, coach, this He's been working with your with your athletes for the last you know ten weeks now. So um, you know, and, and again, a lot of times that that's that goes a long way to make sure that people know who they are. Um, the other one is you know irrelevance. You know, and that's that goes back to you know, do they know what, if, that what they're doing is important? Do they feel that they're making an impact? And again, I always talk about when you come into the weight room, you should be able to learn something. You should be able to teach something. And I know that they they took pride in the second one a little bit more, right? I learned this, but I was able to get this athlete to do this because I told him this. And I think that's really important. If you can make sure that, again, challenge them to get that. Challenge them to make sure they leave the weight room with that information. And then lastly is, is a measurement. Do they know if they're doing a good job or not? And I think that's important. It doesn't matter if it's just at the end of a training session, just get them together and say, hey, listen. And again, it's always that sandwich technique. This is what you did good. Hey, you need to work on this. But overall, great job. You know, let's, let, let's move on. Let's be better next time. And empower them that this is a we thing. This is about us as a program. And this is we are working together with these athletes to get the best result and give them the best experience possible. So when they leave, they graduate, they can always look back at their experience as a student athlete saying that this was the best experience that I could have had. And everybody involved in sports performance was a part of that. So that's really important for, for, for everyone to understand. So, and again, a couple things uh, that I like to do with, with the interns, um, is you know when we're setting up to have that time where everybody can get together whether we just had friday seminars we had to split it up sometimes we had the third thursdays uh which was like a once a month thing we had special uh topics we would bring in uh outside coaches during that time we would bring in people from the community and it was really good to kind of interact and it gets you a chance to get up there and coaches love to coach and it gives you a chance to really get up there and now you're coaching at a higher level because you're not just talking about re you know rationale with your athletes to get them to work harder you're doing rationale with the coaches to get them to understand why you're doing things in the first place. And it really is, it's rewarding for a coach too. And you start to learn, you know, because you get a chance to really get up in front of them. So those are important. Um, and again, really, you know, the, the professional development thing, we talked about that as well. Uh, that's really important to get them to as many different clinics, conferences, and, and seminars as you can. Because again, what they learn, uh, you know, not just in the conference or in the clinics or during the presentations, but outside of that, being able to interact with coaches because most of the people that are in that audience are the people that could be hiring them. And I think that's, that's really important to understand. So again, a couple of assignments that, that, that I like to give um, our interns it was really giving them an opportunity to, um, you know, I like the five exercise drill. Give me five exercises you would do for every sport all season long regardless and again it, can't, it has to be specific and it was interesting to see that because they were able to they were able to really uh you, know, you they have to be able to tell why you know why am i going to do a boss squat as opposed to a front squat as opposed to a back squat and i think that's really you start to get the, and they start to as a and it's a funny how that really evolves and the other thing too was um you know always make sure they understand the athletes they're working with 
I love to do this every time I have a new intern from another university. I say, okay, look at this group, group, group training right now. Who's the best player in here? A lot of times, uh, you know, very rarely would they guess. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't, because you know your best lifters might not be your best players. But it's important to get to know. Uh, the more your at your interns can know your athletes, the better experience they're going to have, because they're going to have an impact. And if they have an impact, they're going to leave there uh, with more passion to have an impact at the next university they go to. So uh, a couple of things. These are expectations I always would give uh, anybody that even volunteered for me. And again, it's important. A couple of things is you know making sure that they're working better. Uh, you know to to work as a better coach every time and again making sure that they're working well with other interns that's going to be important nothing can really sabotage your training culture like two volunteers um, that you know people are iffy about you know in, you know fighting amongst themselves so I think that's really important that you facilitate a culture that really is is collaborative but at the same time is competitive and I that sometimes that's tough to do but it really is it, it's going to start with you as, as, as a head coach so um, lastly you know just uh, if you have any questions and again uh, please feel free to hit us up at elitefts.com and again it'll be elite FTS a category backslash categories backslash education uh, and to, to get a hold of, of, of any of these these webinars that are that are going up um, and again last to leave you with this, just make sure that every time that you have an opportunity to mentor a young coach, that you uh, can say at the end of the day that they leave your program a better coach than they were because of, if you can't instill, you know, it's not just the knowledge you instill in them, but it's also that passion, it's also that, that rationale. Give them the reason why. And if your reason why is strong, if the reason why you coach and you wake up every day to help those student athletes, then their reason why is going to be strong as well. And it's, it's going to be it's on you a lot to make sure that, again, when they, they're able to, and they're prepared to go through that next, that next uh, level or that next you know, path that they need to go to in their lives. So, and again, it's really on you and take accountability uh, for that process. And if you don't have the time, you don't have the passion to teach, uh, I would probably try to really fight and fundraise and get a paid assistant uh, where that may be not as, not as prominent. But again, regardless, be better coaches than you were yesterday. And that's what's important. So again, hit us up at leadfds.com. Thanks for your time.